Welcome to Outdoor Photo Workshops, series on digital workflow. My name is Jason Hahn, one of OPW's instructors, and this month's topic is USM, the Unsharp Mass Filter. This filter can be a source of a fair amount of confusion when it comes to what all the settings mean, so we'll show you in this video the basics and how to get the best results using it. While there are other sharpening methods and a variety of sharpening plugins on the market for Photoshop, USM works really well in most situations to improve the overall sharpness of your images. Here's how it works in a nutshell. It's a local contrast adjustment which increases the difference between light and dark pixels within your image by creating halos around edge areas. So for example, let's say we have a shot of a blue sky which has no edges. There's All the pixels within this image are the same tonality, so there's nothing that would be really determined by the software to be an edge. However, now if we add a cloud to that, I know this is some stunning photography work here, but if we add this cloud, now we have a large tonal difference from the edge of the cloud to the blue sky. What USM will do once you run the filter is apply a faint halo around the edge of the cloud to make it stand out more from the blue sky. The net result is that you end up with an image that's sharper than before you ran the USM filter. So USM began ages and ages ago in the ancient, ancient days of film. Okay, as you may have guessed, I'm not a film guy and never spent any time inhaling fumes in a dark room. But let's make a deal. Uh, don't beat me up if I get the film terminology wrong. I won't pick on you if you get all misty-eyed over Velvia. So anyway, in the ancient days of film, USM was accomplished by a complex process of layering of negative and positive plates. In the digital world, a similar process is used. First, the software creates a copy of your image, then applies a blur to that copy. This is layered over the original, and depending on the settings you choose, a huge amount of math and computation and, and uh, digital magic is performed by your software, and eventually it spits out a sharper version of your image. And you can see in this unsharpened version, we don't have quite the same level of detail in the fur as we do in the sharpened version. The key with USM is not to overdo things. It's very easy to, to end up with big halos or other weird effects in your images if you overdo the settings in the USM filter. A little bit goes a long way, and you can see in this image how we have a nicely sharpened image. Here we have obvious halos and, and a lot of other artifacts within the image. Most of the time you'll find that our settings are going to be nearer the bottom of the scale than the top. So let's jump into Photoshop, and we'll take a look at one of my images here. This is one of the cowboys from our fall uh, American Cowboy Spirit of the West photo workshop. Yeah, I know it's a totally shameless plug, but you got to give me points for product placement. So anyway, on this particular shot, all of our processing is done. We're ready to print the image as a 4x6 at 300 ppi and hang it on the wall. One of the important things to note is that USM is almost always the final step in our workflow process, in part because the settings are going to depend on what your intended output is, whether it's a small image to put on the web or a big print to hang on your wall. The other part of the equation is how much detail is in the image, whether we have detail throughout or whether we have large areas of, of, of smooth color or, or soft gradients. Now, before we run the filter, one of the first things I want to do is duplicate the background in my image. There's a couple reasons why I, I do this. The, the first is that I don't like doing permanent things to the original layer of the image. By using the background copy, I can very easily turn that layer on or off if I see that I don't like what I, uh, happened with that filter, and I can always go back to the original and create a new copy of it. The other thing is if I get all into my workflow. I've done my sharpening, but then I notice a dust speck. I clone that out. I decide to tweak the color. I fix a couple other things. If I suddenly decide that, you know, it doesn't look like I, I must not have been wearing my glasses when I sharpened this thing because it looks way over sharpened. At that point, if I wanted to go back, I'd have to undo everything I've just done in my workflow and go back and redo the sharpening. This way, I can always just turn off that layer, create another copy, and, and do it over again or I can just use the opacity slider and slide down the uh, opacity on that, thereby dimming the effect of the sharpening. So anyway, we've got our, our layer duplicated, and let's go into the USM filter. To do so, click on Filter, and then go to Sharpen and Unsharp Mask. I'm using Photoshop CS3. If you're using a different version, most of the concepts in this are going to be similar. You just may have to access the filter in a slightly different way. So here's our dialog window for the Unsharp Mask filter. And what we're looking at here 
is a preview pane of the effects of the filter on the image. I'll slide these sliders down a little bit so you have a better feel for what's going on in the image. Within the preview pane, we can either drag it around the image within the preview pane, or we can click specific areas within the image we want to see the effects of the sharpening on. We can also zoom in or out. Usually we're going to view it at 100%, but occasionally you may want to move things up so that you're looking at things more at the pixel level. Now you can see within, once we zoom in, you can see this faint halo here. That's the effect of USM, and it's that halo that we're going to be controlling with the amount radius and threshold setting below. Now, the, as for these sliders down here, amount, radius, and threshold, the combination of those three are going to produce your USM setting. Out of them, all of them are important. They just have different effects on the look of the filter. Now, amount is listed as a percentage. It controls how much darker or how much lighter the edge borders become. So as we slide it to the left, the borders aren't as pronounced. As we slide it to the right, you can see that they become much brighter. And you can see once we slide it all the way up, we have starting to have a kind of a crazy looking effect on our image. Now what the amount doesn't do is control the width of those halos or those borders. That's the job of radius. And radius is probably one of the easiest to mess up in, in, when you're doing USM, but it's also the most important for getting just the right amount of sharpness. Again, remember, we're going to be working at the bottom of the scale. And you can see as we bump up our radius, how that halo begins to get wider. As we go further and further, it gets more and more distinct until we turn the, our, our picture into some kind of Warhol-esque piece of pop art. We really don't want that. We want just a nice, sharp image. So we're usually going to be working with radiuses around the 1 range, maybe as high as 2 as 3, but also sometimes down in the decimal points. Now, our threshold is important as it determines what the minimum difference has to be in tonal value between pixels for the USM to even uh, do anything. So it kind of turns the filter on and off uh, if you don't have enough difference. The reason this is important is in smooth areas like this blue sky, if you have too low a threshold, you may start to see speckling, as we do here. Now as we move that up, you can see it removes that speckling in that sky area. However, if you get your threshold too high, it won't work on the rest of your image, so that areas of fine detail won't have any USM applied, such as in the, the coat of the horse, you can see at this threshold we don't have a lot of sharpening, where if we move the threshold back down, the USM begins to take effect.